Milo offers an extensive media library that you can make use of in order to manage your files and upload new files and also to find files that others have uploaded and make use of those. By files, I mean you can make use of images and you can also use this for PDFs. There are three ways that you can get into the media library and make use of it. The first way is when you're working with content on your site and you want to be able to place those files directly into that content in some way, such as showing an image on a page or linking to a PDF from a specific, from a specific page or document. So among the options that you have, the first two are directly related to creating new content. And then the last one that I'm going to show you is working with files without being in a specific piece of content. So when you're creating content, I'm going to go ahead and add a new page here to pull up this form. When you're creating content, you have two access points into the media library. The first is through text areas. So I have a button on the top right that looks like a little postage stamp with a mountain on it. If I click on that, that will open the media browser for me. This gets me into the media library. I'm going to close this and we'll come back to it in a minute. The other place within content editing that you will be able to access the media browser is through these large blue browse buttons that you'll see throughout. These blue browse buttons, however, only give you access to the types of files that are related to the specific field that you're working in and at that moment. So for example, this specific field is an image field. So when I click on browse, I'll only be able to work with images. And this specific field right here is a media field for attachments. So when I click on that, I'll only be able to work with documents, not images, because that's the kind of material that's expected in that specific environment. Scrolling up here, I'm going to make use of this one to show you how the media library works and what it looks like. So our first option here is to upload a new file. This is if the file that we want to make use of, the image or document or PDF, notice there's all kinds of files that you can make use of here. If that particular file doesn't exist on the system, then I'll need to upload it. The last tab here, we're going to go through all these tabs, but I'm going to start with the last one. The last one allows you to see all of the files that have been uploaded onto this system, and you can search through them. I'm going to scroll down here because I want to show you that we see up 20 files at once. And there is a pager here that gets us through the rest of the files that are available. I can make more files visible at one time if I'd like to, if 20 just doesn't seem like the right number to be looking at. And I can also search for files based on a number of parameters. So for example, if I'm specifically looking for files that have been uploaded that are good for the slideshow image field, then I might choose that media tag and then apply. And at this time, there are no images that have been uploaded that are tagged for slideshow image. I do know that there are a number of images that I've already uploaded that are demo images, so I'm going to go ahead and choose that and apply, and now we see images that are tagged for a demo. If I'm looking for files that are related to voter education, then I might type in here voter education or educating voters, and then this gives me the ability to find files tagged by specific issues or other parameters. There's also a description search here, so I can look for files that have a certain description within them. If I'm looking for a Facebook image, for example, I might want to type in Facebook under description, and then under media tags, I'll choose social media, and then we'll see what happens. And there we go, a Facebook icon has come up for me. When I'm using the media browser, once I find the image I want, I can click on the image to highlight it and click Submit. What happens now is if I'm in the WYSIWYG itself in the visual editor when I pull this up, I then get access to a number of options that allow me to adjust the required alt text, adjust the title text, and also to change the description. 
The file description and all of this other information is how this file gets found on the system. So it's really important that all of that information is very useful. Once I'm happy with all of this, then I will click Submit. And then the file, whether it's a PDF or an image or whatever it is, will then be in the body field of the content. If I used one of these options, then let me just go back to all files here and I'll choose this airmail postage image. Then the file goes directly into that main image field and I didn't get that form that asks me to change the alt text or the description or any of that if I need to. If I need to do any of that, then I can click on the edit button right here and then this allows me to replace the file. Let's say I have an updated version of this airmail file here. Um, and it also allows me to adjust the alt text in the description here or the media tags if I need to. I'm going to go back up to the WYSIWYG version of this media browser and talk a little bit about these additional tabs here. So in addition to the All Files tab, we also have a My Files tab, a My Leagues Files tab, and then the Upload tab. My Files will show you any file that you have uploaded. My Leagues Files will show you any files that have been uploaded by a webmaster of your league or any league of which you are a member. Sorry, of which you are a webmaster. The Upload tab allows you to upload a new file. So at this point, I can now go ahead and find a file on my system and upload it to the system. I'm going to open this and go through the process. On the destination page, I'm actually going to skip this, although, and leave it as public. And typically, that's what you're going to do. If you happen to be uploading a file that's intended for members only, people who are authenticated to your system, then you would want to choose private. But in this case, this is a public file. Now I can change some aspects of the file. I can adjust what the site considers the center of this particular image because there are some areas where the site will automatically crop an image and it'll do so from all edges. So it'll do so keeping whatever it thinks is the center of the image as the center. So if this is a picture of somebody's face, for example, you would want to put these little crosshairs right between their eyes and around the middle of their nose so that that is always considered the center of the image and how the image gets cropped. Then here I'll fill in the alt text. This is a required field. It is what screen readers will see if they cannot, if a site or the user cannot actually see the image itself. So this is where you need to impart information to the user that cannot be gathered from simply not having the image available to you. The file description is really important because this is how people are going to be able to find the file on your system. When I did a search for Facebook files, I, I looked for the description Facebook, and I only found that icon because the word Facebook was included in the file description. I can also relate this file to a number of images if I think that that's relevant. And I would put in a media tag here. In this case, this is a demo image that will be deleted. And I'm going to remove these items here because we don't want to relate this to an image. And I'm also going to say this is a demo image to be deleted. Alt text is required. And then we can go ahead and save this. Now notice I get this form again, which allows me to change something about the text or the description. This information does go with the instance of the file on the page itself, not visually, but in terms of semantic or metadata, data that the site knows about, which is great for search engine optimization. And then I'll click Submit. Now the file is dropped into the WYSIWYG here. And if I click on it, I get these little boxes and these boxes allow me to resize my file if I just click down on them and drag and then I can 
change the size of the file until I'm happy with it. And once I'm happy, then I'll move on to the rest of my content. I'm going to click on this one more time because I want to show you now there is going to be a file under my leagues files and under my files because I have now uploaded an image. And that is how you use the media browser. Everything I showed you is relevant for images, PDFs, Word documents, PowerPoint files, and any number of other types of files that you might make use of.